When we pipeline a circuit, we often need to add shift registers at the inputs and the outputs to align them so that they produce meaningful results. In this example, we will design a 4-bit adder and then we will internally pipeline this 4-bit adder to increase its operating frequency. Then we will add additional registers in order to align the inputs and the outputs of the adder. So if you look at the uh, n bit addition process here we have four bits what we are doing in the first bit position is we are adding the one to the zero to produce a sum of zero uh, a sum of one and a carry of zero in the second bit position we're adding the zero and the one and the one to produce a sum of zero and a carry out of one in the following bit position we add the three ones together to get a sum of one and a carry out of zero and in the final bit position we add the one and the one to get a sum of one and a carry out of zero so we are basically in every bit position, we are doing uh, the same operation, which is called a full addition. In full addition, we are adding three bits. Two of them come from the two operands A and B, and one of them is a carry in that comes from the previous bit position. We produce two bits, a sum bit to the current bit position and a carry out bit to the upcoming bit position. The truth table for the full adder is shown here and let's fill it together. If we add the three bits 0, 0 plus 0, we get a 0 and a 0. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is a sum of 1 and a carry out of 0. So is 0, 1, 0. If we add 0, 1 and 1, we get a sum of 0 and a carry out of 1. 1, 0, 0 gives us a 1, 0. 1, 0, 1 gives us a 0, 1. 0, 1. And finally, if we add three 1s, then we get a 1 in both sum and carry out. If we draw the kernel maps of the uh, sum and carry uh, functions, because when you look at the carry out and the sum, these are two independent functions. So in fact, this is two truth tables. And this unit is actually two CMOS circuits because we have two outputs. So even though we draw it as a single combinational logic block, it actually contains two CMOS gates within. So we have to draw two um, kernel maps for each of the functions. So for the function s, the min terms that will be active will be 1, uh, 2, uh, and um, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. For the sum, we'll have uh, 3 uh, and 7, 6, and 5. So these will be the active min terms. Now for the sum, we will not have any possibility of minimization, and the function for sum will be a XOR b XOR c n, which sees no uh, possibility of minimization, and it will be uh, a b c n, a bar b bar c n, plus uh, a bar uh, b c n bar, that's for min term 2, and min term 4 is a b bar c n bar, and min term 7 is a, b, c, n. So it basically passes a 1 whenever we see an odd number of 1s at the input. For carry out, on the other hand, we can minimize by taking uh, squares around all of these min terms to produce a carry out function which is equal to b, c, n plus uh, a, b plus a, c, n. So we have a function that can be minimized and can be further minimized by taking a as a common factor, for example, or B or C n uh, in one of the um, in one of the uh, between two of the terms. So when we implement these functions, we can implement them using uh, traditional methods of implementing CMOS static CMOS gates. We will get the expression of C out bar and uh, sum bar, and these are the functions. These are the expressions we will implement in the pull down network, and then we implement um, the opposite in the pull up network. Uh, obviously, we will get a much more complex circuit for the sum than for the carry out because, first of all, it includes more terms, and second of all, it, all of the terms are longer. The fact that it includes more terms means that it has more parallel path. The fact that each of the terms is longer means that it will have longer path. More parallel path means more loading on the output node. Longer path means more resistance. And this means more, much more delay in the sum than in the carry. So when we do draw the uh, sum and the, and the carry gates, we can calculate T sum and T carry using the uh, time constant method that we 
used to calculate uh, CMOS delay in module 3. And what we know is that T sum will be greater than T carry. So T carry in general will be uh, shorter. So if we have the full adder, we can use it to build uh, the 4-bit adder. And this is the simplest adder that we can build. We will talk about it in more detail in module uh, 11. It's called the ripple carry adder. So basically, uh, each bit position is going to take two uh, input bits from the operands. Uh, we, we will number them A and B, 0 through uh, 2, uh, through 3 for uh, the 4 bit adder. Right? And then each of them is also going to uh, accept a carry in from the uh, carry out of the previous full adder. And so uh, the outputs from each full adder will form the sum bits and we will have sum naught through sum 3 and there will be an additional sum 4 that is produced as the carry out of the final full adder. We here we are assuming that there is a carry in for the uh, very first adder, uh, although from this calculation it could have been a half adder, but for generality we will assume it is a full adder. So now there are two questions here. First of all, what is the operating frequency of this adder? When we ask about the operating frequency of any circuit whatsoever, uh, what we do is we assume there are registers at all the inputs and all the outputs. And because we will be using a lot of registers here, we will use the X. We will use an X to mark a register. So we are assuming registers are all the inputs, including CN, and registers on all the outputs, including S4. And so now the question is, what is the longest path between any two registers on an input and an output? That longest path is going to be the critical path and it will dominate and define the delay of the circuit. So what's the longest path? Now if we look at the final full adder, this final full adder needs its input uh, uh, carry in in order to start calculating. But this carry in will depend on the previous adder, on this full adder, which can only start calculating once it gets this carry in which is an output from this adder, which can only start calculating once it gets this carry in. And therefore, this final full adder will only start calculating after all these three carries have been calculated in cascade. The first adder will calculate T carry, the second adder will calculate T carry, and they are added because the second adder will not start calculating its carry until the first adder has changed because as has finished, because the first adder's carry out is the second adder's carry in. So it's one of its inputs. And then plus T carry for the third adder. And once we've reached the final adder, the final adder is producing two outputs, S3 and S4. S4 is a carry out and S3 is an actual sum. Because the sum is greater than a carry, then we will use T sum. And therefore the delay here is 3T carry plus T sum. And in general, for an n bit adder, we can conclude that it will be n minus 1 T carry plus T sum. Right? Now, how can we improve the performance of this circuit? How can we uh, increase its frequency? Simply by performing internal pipelining. So we add registers in between each of the full adders. Now, the critical path is not through the entire adder the critical path is through a single adder. So we have to look at this path or this path. Recall that there are two paths within each full adder, the sum and the carry path. And of course, the sum path is longer. And so now our clock period is, has to be greater than or equal T sum, just T sum, right? If you respect T sum, everybody's gonna finish and register their outputs properly but you don't need, actually need to, uh, to wait for T carriers because they are registered on every cycle. This is the whole idea of pipelining. However, there's something here that we have to pay attention to, which is the fact that we need to align the inputs and the outputs. So let's think about it this way. In, in the second full adder, in this full adder, these inputs, A1 and B1, are going to be ready after a single clock cycle because we have one register along the way. 
This input, its carry-in, is going to be ready after two clock cycles because there are two registers along the way. In the first clock cycle, A0 and B0 are going to pass into the first full adder. At the second clock cycle, the proper carry-out is going to be given to the second adder. And so the A's and the B's are produced a cycle earlier than the carry-out to the second adder. And so the inputs here are not aligned and the addition is not going to be proper in the second full adder. What we need to do is we need to delay the A and the B by two by another cycle so that they arrive at the same time as the carry-in. And for the third adder, you will notice that now there are three registers along the way to the carry-in, either through uh, A1 and B1 and carry-in or all the way up from uh, A0 and B0, you will always see three registers along the way. And so we need to add two registers here. And finally here, along the way, this will only be ready after uh, four cycles, while these will be ready after one cycle. And so we need to add three registers here. Similarly, if we look at the outputs, then this output, S3, is going to be ready after five cycles, because there is one, two, three, four, and five clock cycles along the way. So is S4, which is fine. But S2 is going to be ready after one, two, three, four cycles. Thus, we need to add an additional register here. S1 will be ready after only three cycles, so add two registers here. And S0 is, 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 is ready after only two cycles, so add three registers here. This way, the inputs and the outputs are provided in alignment. If we, add, if we give an input A and B, of 3 and 1, and then an input A of 5 and an input B of 6, then after 5 cycles we will see an output of 4, and then the next cycle we will see an output of 11. We will have a latency of 4 and a throughput of 1 over T sum, which is how a pipeline is supposed to operate.